Hey everybody, I'm Kate Conroy. And I'm Vinny Civitello. And this is Other People's Business, which is the podcast from the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, the largest statewide business association in the nation, representing about one quarter of New Jersey's workforce. We release a new episode every other Wednesday, so be on the lookout for that. Shout out to New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group. They do home, auto, and workers' comp, and they are the official sponsor of the show. So check them out if you need some updated coverage. Awesome. Just a housekeeping matter or two before we get this thing rolling. This podcast is available just about anywhere you can get a podcast. That's iTunes, Google Play, Amazon's TuneIn. We even throw these things up on YouTube if you'd rather watch than listen. But no matter how you check the show out, show it some love. Give it that like. Give it that comment. Give it that five-star review on iTunes. Helps each respective algorithm from whatever network you're watching this on push the show out to more people who you'd be surprised to learn are just like you. So with all that out of the way, our awesome guest today, and I'm going to read this because we got letters involved here and that's always going to mess me up, is Jim O'Connor from CBIZ Benefits and Insurance Services. Jim, say hi. Let the audience hear your voice. Hello, Vinny. Hey, Kate. Hey, everybody. Good to be here with you. Great hey. to be. Great to have you. Yeah. And don't be offended. I mess up NJBIA all the time, so I didn't want to that's mess okay. up. That's okay. So the, the letters are actually pronounced CBIZ. Oh, that's even easier. All right. Even easier. <laughs> and that's my bad. Usually Vinny and I will have a production meeting in advance and we go over pronunciation and we just couldn't make it happen this week. So that's on me. She was like, we don't need it. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. So today's icebreaker is what are you currently binging? And this can be books, movies, television, food, whatever strikes your fancy. What are you binging lately? Uh, that's an easy one. We, my wife and I are binging Ted Lasso right now. I've heard such great things, but I'm not an Apple person, and so I don't, I don't have access. It yeah. is wonderful. He's a, he's a low-level American college football coach that gets hired by a premier soccer league team to become a soccer coach in England, and all of the trials and tribulations with that are what the show is about, but he is just a, a feel-good, positive guy. So in these kind of times that we're going through with the news and pandemics and so on and so forth, it actually is a feel-good program that's not over-the-top corny, but but everybody I talk to of any age group loves it. And so uh, they ran a piece on it on 60 Minutes, and so that's how my wife and I got introduced to it, and, and that's what we're binging right now. That is awesome. so awesome. I'm very jealous. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been looking for shows to watch on the Apple TV Plus thing or whatever it's called because I really want to watch Severance, but I don't want to pay them for a month or two just to watch the one show. So I'd like <laughs> yep. to have like a, a nice buildup of stuff that I'd like to check out before I do it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I got to say, Vinny, you are the master at like subscribing for a month or two and then canceling. I've never had the guts to do that because I'm always like, they're going to yell at you and be like, no, 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 you signed yeah, up. Yeah, like somebody over at Apple is going to be like, darn it, Kate. <laughs> like, <laughs> start looking down on you. No, it's, it's yeah. fine. In fact, and I mean, I'm not going to promote like skirting around stuff or whatever, but like you could even do a free trial. And if you finish binging whatever it is you signed up to watch before the free trial ends, just tell them, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get anything else I wanted to watch out of this. I'm done. And then maybe – Next year, sign up for another free trial, watch the second season, whatever it is. It feels like a very small way to stand up to corporate America, doesn't it? Like, right? I'm gonna... <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. They get you sometimes. Like um, CBS, I, I did a free trial to watch uh, Star Trek Discovery, and it was like a week. So I binged it in a week. And then they go, um, well, do you want to have a free month instead? And I'm like, yeah, I want to have a free month. And then by the end of the free month, you forget. So, you know, you wind up getting charged for a month or two. Until you get around to canceling it, they they know they know this is what you're doing, and they know that's how they get you. So, they actually have a name and picture on a board in their corporate office saying, "Watch out for yeah. this." Totally. Scammer. <laughs> Scammer. <Most> wanted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vinny, what are you binging? I can't really say I'm binging much of anything right now. We um we just started upload season two, <gasps> which is kind of crazy because um I only really learned about the show in the last few months. Um, I think I learned about it on this show. One of yeah. you or the guests or both were talking about it. So I checked out season one and it was really good timing because season one had been out for a few years or a couple of years. And I guess just, you know, victim of the pandemic, they didn't get that second season out until now. So a lot of people had to wait two years. I only had to wait like a month or two. So, you know. <laughs> 
I actually forgot about it until the guest, I don't remember who it was, mentioned it. And I was like, oh, I loved that show. And then, of course, what, what is this? A few weeks later, season two drops. And I went through it in a weekend. I think I spent one Saturday just being like, next episode, next episode, next yeah. episode. <laughs> it's awesome because it's only half an hour. I, you exactly. know, I can binge half hour shows like it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very easy. Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso's half an hour, I think. Uh, yeah, they are. They're half an hour episodes. See, so. I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not That's really binging. Is... Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say the only real problem is when I watched Upload. So my wife Tara watched it a couple years ago when it first aired. And then I watched it, you know, like a couple months ago. And so I sat down and watched Upload, at, you know, season two, episode one with her. And so now I'm just like, do I wait for her? You know, are, are we on separate journeys with Upload or do I wait for her? Because waiting for Tara can mean that this will take like four months to finish. Oh. Like, hey, if I just decide to sit down and watch it, it's done, you know, maybe by tomorrow. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's always tough, you know. That's, that's a, a marital balancing act that you need to just figure out. Exactly. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Not all right. Okay. Hey, what are you watching? <laughs> so I'm actually not binging anything new. I'm rewatching a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, but so the thing that I'm that I'm binging is actually a book, which is very off brand for me. I know I don't think I've ever come to this uh, this podcast yeah. binging book. Have yeah. I? Yeah, it was the um, what was it Roth? <gasps> yeah, Philip Roth. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm binging The Artist's Way, which is a book that was written in the '80s to help creative people get unblocked and to help non-creative people tap into their creativity. And so every week you read a chapter and you do some writing assignments and I got to say, I'm loving it. Like I did not expect to be like all artsy. Uh, Cause I'm not, I'm very left brain. I'm very like, give me an Excel spreadsheet and I am in my happy place. You know what I mean? Sure. But uh, yeah, loving the artist's way. Okay. Cool. Do you feel unblocked? Like, is this show going to get significantly more creative now? <laughs> no promises. No promises. Okay. We'll see. All right. Well, speaking of unblocking and moving on, let's talk about the company formerly known as CBiz, which I now know is, or no, no, yeah, CBiz, which I was going to say was formerly known as CBIC. But yes, tell me all about CBiz. <laughs> So CBIZ has actually been around here 25 years, and uh, we're a national financial services company. So we have an accounting practice. It's one of the largest in the country. We have an employee benefits consulting and brokerage practice. That's a top 20 in the country. That's what I'm a part of. And then we have risk management, property and casualty, executive search, um, compensation consulting. So we're a really diverse business services firm. New York Stock Exchange Company, and um, all over this, all like I said, all over the U.S. And I'm based here in our Manasqua, New Jersey office. I really like the commitment to celebrating the 25 years that you got the vest and everything. You know. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> got the uh, email that says, "Hey, pick some swag." And uh, yeah. I think like, I picked this because I'm on like Zoom calls with 30 people, and like 10 of the guys have this thing on. So I love it. Yeah. Golf vest. <laughs> I like it. And it looks like you're wearing a little green under your golf vest. We that, that is, that is in turn. I'm, I'm, I see, I'm an O'Connor. So I carry high holy day of yesterday carries forward to today. Same. Also being By the, the time uh, you hear this day. show, it's going to be April or something, but just for the sake of everybody listening, we are recording this the day after St. Patrick's day. That's yes, right. Yeah. I'm wearing green still as well. And Vinny, your green background is almost as good as our green clothing. I'm St. Exactly. Patrick's day celebratory all year round. Okay. <laughs> there you go. It's true. So the uh, the company's interesting, though. I don't think I've ever met a company that has all of those different business models under one roof. It's either financial services or health benefits. Um, that's or search. I mean, that's really interesting. How did that come to be? Yeah, it's it's a great story, um, and, and it's worth telling. So literally, back in the '90s, late '90s, there was an accountant. A payroll administrator. Oh man, it really has been 25 years since the late 90s. Hasn't it? Right, <laughs> I'm sorry. Right? Go ahead. And this sounds like the start of a joke, right? Three guys walk into a bar. Well, well, this is an accountant and a payroll guy and an insurance guy would get together every week for coffee, and, and swap leads, right? We're all in business, right? It, it's networking. It's hey, can you introduce me to da da da? And they came to the conclusion that they would be much stronger if they literally had the same business card and were approaching the market, not just as three different business cards giving each other referrals, but actually 
built a company. So that's what they did. They started the company, and then uh, that was in, I think, 97, 98, and then they built it up from there and made acquisitions. And so we're now a, I don't know, a $1.2, $1.3 billion New York Stock Exchange company with over 5,000 employees and very diverse businesses. And so uh, literally it was three guys in a coffee shop in Cleveland, Ohio, that started this company. So I love the story of the background. That's amazing. So I guess I've always assumed and thought, because I've known you for so long now, that it's a New Jersey company, but it, you're, na you're national and you started in Ohio. Yeah, yeah, we did. So I've always been in New Jersey 35 years or well, more than 35 years uh, in New Jersey business, grew up here. Uh, and so I've been in the insurance business since 87 and been part of a few exits of different firms, sold our first firm to Summit Bank, New Jersey, that became Fleet, that became Bank yep. of America. Yep. And then I started my own firm with two partners, Lou Amato and Bill Egan, and Egan Amato and O'Connor was the name of our firm. And then we brought on a fourth partner, Terry Brown, and we sold that to CBiz in 09. Um, we've been at CBiz ever since, and I've had various roles in leadership uh, here at CBiz um, during this tenure. So it's been a good run. That's fantastic. That's And you're a benefits guy. I'm a benefits guy, right. So think anything from small, mid-size, pseudo-large. I don't do the IBM size companies of the world, but you know anywhere from a small business to a few thousand employees would be my market space. And I've, the last uh, two years, I've been very, very focused in niches in industries that have um, a high percentage of low to moderate income employees, restaurants and transportation, et cetera, because they've been pretty, pretty underserved by the traditional health insurance industry. Uh, so I've gotten involved with some specialty programs that are bringing some much needed uh, cost effective benefits, health benefits to that niche. And so it's been pretty effective. That's fantastic. I, yeah. I feel like benefits is such a, a tough, it has been in New Jersey, such a tough place to be because of just the way that the market is. There've been double digit price increases for like yeah. as long as I can remember. It's uh, yeah. it's like the second biggest line item in, in any business's budget. So it's awesome that you get to like work with them and help them save money and figure out what the best product is for them. Yeah, it is. It is. Sometimes uh, I, I, I say that my job is about managing a negative, right? Because you've got costs going up. How do we contain that? Uh, and, and often the, the, the solutions are not very um, tenable, right? You can raise deductibles, you can cut benefits. That hurts the employees and their families. And yet, you know, particularly now, but always health benefits and all the benefits are about attracting and retaining talent, right, for an employer. And now with the labor uh, challenges that we're having throughout the country, um, like we're seeing wages double. Like I have restaurant clients where, where wages are doubling for their hourly workers. And that's great for the work, right? And, and, and that, that's, you know, whole, whole dynamic there. Uh, but then there's real competition uh, for employees. And so if an employer has a, a solid health and welfare benefit program, they're more likely to win that battle to attract new employees as well as to retain the ones they have. And we're now even seeing it being extended into the part-time space as employers are, are starting to turn to more multiple part-timers to fill the, the open slots of, of full-timers that they can't fill. So, so it is, I do get a lot of value and satisfaction out of working with the employers. And then also, you know, candidly, I like the fact that it has social value. Right. What I do has social value. You know, you, you're providing health benefits and, and life insurance and disability insurance and things that are a real need in a family. Um, so that that also feels good from a career profession. Perspective. I like it. Yeah. Go ahead, Ben. I was going to say, what sets you guys apart from everyone else? Uh, that's a great question. I think uh, first and foremost, the diversification. Right. You can literally get we, we literally joke and we say we can do everything for an employer, except we're not their bank. We're not their lawyer. But other than that, you're yeah, working uh, on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, working on that. Um, but but so to be able to to come into an employer of any size, small or large, and to be able to bring really high quality, you know, really really high quality accounting services and benefit consulting services and risk management services, and then even executive search and comp consulting, right, and payroll administration. So so that that unto itself is a real differentiation. There's lots of firms that will have multiple divisions and they kind of cross sell, right? And they cross refer. But CBiz has kind of broken the code about being a really pretty solid integrated 
uh, model going to market and, and, and serving clients from multiple facets. Now, having said that, we're also open architecture. And so it doesn't mean you have to take everything from us. So if you're happy with your account, you can still hire us just for benefits, et cetera. Um, and then we work well with those other professional partners of the client. So, so I think probably many of the, the biggest thing that differentiates us is how well we've stitched together the diversity of our services into, um, you know, candidly a pretty well playing orchestra as opposed to just a discordant bunch of noise. I've never, cool. heard, I've never heard that phrase before, open architecture, but as soon as you said it, I knew what you meant. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty, pretty, pretty good that way. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, I think we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be right back. And welcome back. And we're now going to ask a second get to know you question. And today that question is, it's a little out there. If you could live in any TV show, what would it be? Wow. Right? Any TV show, what would it be? <laughs> Uh, you know, the okay. funny thing about that question is I, all right, so you asked me if I could live in any TV show, what would it be? And the first thing that popped in my mind is how do I want to die? Because the various <laughs> shows I watch, that's what it would be. Like, you know, it's either I'm getting pulled into the upside down by some monster on Stranger Things. I'm getting Jeez. thrown into a banyan tree by a column of sentient black smoke on Lost. I'm getting sent down to some alien planet as a red shirt on Star Trek. Like, you know, no matter what, I'm going to die. So. That's know. that's actually kind of the first thing I thought as well. My first, my gut reaction was Gilmore Girls. And then I was like, don't be embarrassing. You're going to embarrass yourself if you say that in public. <laughs> but then I started to think about the alternatives. Like The Good Place is one of my all-time favorite shows. But, but Then you're in hell. <laughs> but yeah, then you're in hell. I, I don't know. The Office? That Spoiler. Would be Sorry. Oh, right, exactly. Spoiler. I don't know. Gilmore Girls, the food was great. The music was great. The clothes were great. And the people I could live with. So, <laughs> but then like it's just that's like real life. Like the Gilmore Girls, you're just living in some small town. You know, like you could do that yeah. now. You don't have to. You don't have to break the the barrier of you know the last action hero and go into <laughs> television in order to live in Gilmore Girls. Like, yeah, that's fair. I don't know. I, it's not a great answer, but it's the answer I keep coming back to. <laughs> Tim, what do you think? Uh, uh, you know what? I think uh, you might might not remember this show, but The Wonder Years. Uh, wow, 1970s, yeah. I'd perpetually be 12 and I would have a crush on Winnie Cooper. So Aww. that would be my perpetual TV show that I would want to live in. That's, that's fair. That's good. That's a good you know, answer. Like it's it. like, you know, you're 12, life is great. Yeah. You've got a pretty girl, but you don't know how what these feelings mean. It's all <laughs> Yeah, you get to play with your friends, ride your bike all summer. Just, yeah, yeah that's. That's a great answer. <laughs> All right. So if if I'm if I get to be a star, then I'd want to be in the Arrowverse because then I could have a superpower or something, you know. Oh. But if I have to be just like a random background character, then I'm gonna go with Lost. Because if I'm gonna <laughs> die, at least I could be on the <laughs> island, you know, have some cool missions, like unlock some cool like Dharma related mysteries, you know, it'd oh. be a good time. Now what you've got to do is is watch the parody of Lost called Wrecked. Have you heard of Wrecked? No, but I'm, I'm going to start as soon as we get <laughs> off this show. three seasons on USA Network. And uh, it was, so you know how Lost, everybody that survived were the big and the beautiful and the strong and the intelligent? Yeah. But Wrecked is everybody else survived. <laughs> and so people that are like, you know, not the smartest, you know, and it's completely a parody of Lost. And, and it's, it's really funny. And so, Vinny, as, I, as I'm listening to you and, and your humor, I think that I, you would enjoy Wrecked and that you, you might be one of those characters. Not not saying you're not the big and the beautiful and the smart ones, but that it's might all good. Be, Wrecked is... No, uh, I, is I don't get to join the A game, the A team or whatever. Like, I, I can't run, you know, long periods for a long time. I can't, yeah, you know, I, I don't know how to work guns, so I can't do that. Like, you know, you, you have to think about these survival skills if you're going to be in a desert island. I, I would definitely be the guy in the background, just kind of nodding my head while the main characters are talking. Yeah. So that that's wrecked, but none of those main characters there are there to lead. So you have to come out of the background, you and the other 50 people that, you know, want to stay in the background and actually survive. So it's a pretty, it's a fun, nice. it's a fun show. I am down. That sounds yeah. amazing. I'm, I'm so down for that. We my, uh, my son's <laughs> college roommate created it right, right out of college in 19. Yeah, wow. yeah, so it was cool. And it's on USA and everything? Yeah, yeah. Wow. R-E-C-K-E-D. 
how long ago was this? Because Lost was a while ago. Lost was 2006 yeah. or something. Yeah. I'm going to tell you uh, 2013 or 14. So they were college graduates in 2012. So I'm going to say 13, 14, 15, 16 in those those time frames, those years. Cool. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. Go. Down. <laughs> All right. Um, Jeff, what are you doing? All right. Jim, before in the first part of the show, you did mention organizations with high percentages of low to moderate um, income employees. Can you tell me a little more about what you can do for those types of businesses? Yeah, yeah. We've gotten involved um, with this program called the Health Benefit Alliance. And the Health Benefit Alliance has been around for a number of years, but hasn't really been, been present in New Jersey or the Mid-Atlantic Northeast region until very recently, where, where we, CBiz, I, my team, became this national for their program, so we're bringing it to the to the local markets around the country. And the Health Benefit Alliance, literally their whole focus for health insurance is on industries, as we just mentioned, that have a fairly high percentage of low to moderate income workers. So people making 10, 12, 15, 18, 20 dollars an hour on the hourly side, or, or less than 50, 40, 30 thousand dollars and down on the salaried side. So what has often happened is that we all know that high deductible plans have become pretty main mainstay of, of health insurance today, right? Everybody has pretty high deductibles. Um, well, a lot of folks are challenged by, by having a two, three, four thousand dollar deductible. But also when you think about somebody making 15, 18, 20 bucks an hour, I think a, a US either Chamber of Commerce study or, or, or one of the studies said that 76% of Americans have less than a thousand dollars in their savings account. Like it, it's 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 some unbelievable number. Yeah. Point being that having a two or three thousand dollar deductible to folks is like having no insurance at all in their day-to-day -day yeah. lives yeah. right so this financial barrier to going to get care if you're sick or your child is sick a loved one so the health benefit alliance is all built upon copay plans so there are no deductibles go to any doctor you want in or out of network pay a copay and so now think about how transformative that can be for some, for anybody but for someone making 15 20 bucks an hour Right now, instead of staring at a big deductible, they can actually take their child to the doctor and see if that sore throat and fever is strep or not, and then actually get the amoxicillin, you know, for a copay at the pharmacy. So, so that's, you know, again, I talked about having social value. So being able to bring access to, to folks that are either uninsured or, or functionally underinsured um, is really been, been a key thing. So we're probably adding about 50 to 60 employers per month into the Health Benefit Alliance, anywhere from two employees on up to 2,000, but a lot of small business, a lot of that under 100 employee space. Um, and and so, so the other part of that, uh, Vinny, is in these types of industries, think restaurants, construction, trucking, home health aids, golf courses, amusement parks here as we get into the spring and summer, um, a lot of times, like that employer, because of the Affordable Care Act, if they have more than 50 employees, right, that which is sometimes called Obamacare, right, that compels an employer, requires an employer to offer affordable, comprehensive health insurance, right, if they have more than 50 employees. What ends up happening is they get a high deductible plan. It's the least expensive thing that they can get, and yet it's still expensive for the employee, so they end up not joining it. So you might have 100 employees, and maybe only 10 are on the plan, right? So the Health Benefit Alliance changes that equation because their plans are, are far more affordable, far more usable, and still fully in compliant with the Affordable Care Act. So, so they've got a really interesting equation. What keeps them affordable? So that's a great question as well. So interestingly, one of the things about the industries that they target, they've got some common traits. So the average age of the group tends to be younger. Right in these restaurants and in these you know construction firms, they tend to be younger. So a younger demographic is going to be healthier, less claims. They tend to be more single versus married or with families. So again, young single people are going to be in a very attractive demographic from a health insurance loss ratio perspective, where they talk about paid premiums versus paid claims. And then lastly, they're high turnover. Now, in the traditional health insurance carriers, they don't like the high turnover businesses because it's administratively you know, burdensome. But HBA, Health Benefit Alliance, loves it because high turnover is actually one of the best friends to a medical loss ratio. 
people, these are jobs. You're probably replacing younger employees with even younger employees with even younger employees. Yeah, yeah, yeah as they grow. And they're not up. staying around long enough to age up, yeah. you know, to a higher risk category. So, so high turnover, young demographic, single has really made for a very stable financial environment uh, from a health insurance perspective. Uh, so that that's really the primary driver of, of how, uh, how the plan has been functioning well. Now, having said that, the plans go from fairly um, stripped down, like there's one plan that does not have maternity coverage, right? All the way up to platinum level plans where I would put my family in or your families, the owners and the executives will go there. But not every employee needs the Mercedes 500. Some are very happy with a fully loaded Honda Accord, right? And so let's give a full menu. And the employees can pick that? You know, it's not just the your employees to pick. The employer picks yeah. one for every, oh, okay, yeah. that's cool. Here's your Honda Civic, here's your Honda Accord, here's your, you know, BMW 3 Series, here's your Mercedes 500, and let them choose. I mean, use the one, for example, that doesn't cover maternity. Again, fully ACA compliant, but I'm 58 years old. My wife and I are never having another kid. I'd be happy to have a plan with Not no maternity. <laughs> <laughs> Physically impossible. You're probably going to edit that. Physically impossible. So, so, right, like, I'd love to have a plan where I'm paying less out of my paycheck that doesn't have maternity coverage. Yeah. So, young, single man or woman, that, that's not even on their radar, right? So, so you kind of give people choices to fit the plan and then to buy supplemental coverages that might want to fill some gaps they want. So you make it simple, standardized, but choice-based. Very cool. Genius. Yeah, the guys that, that, that did it are genius. Yeah, they are actually. <laughs> I've known, I didn't start it. I didn't start it. I've known these guys for 25 years, and, and we got reconnected about two and a half years ago, and they said, hey, uh, love you to help us, you know, and your role at CBiz, you know, expand our market uh, presence, not only in New Jersey and the metro New York area, but nationally. So so we distribute this through about 175 sub-producers, sub-brokers around the country. So so CBiz is, think of the CBiz as like a master distributor, and then you have retail distributors underneath us. And, and so it's been really great to get involved with it. Very cool. Yeah. Anything coming up you want to promote? Uh, yeah, Vinny, thank you, actually. Um, I'm very proud You're to welcome. say. You're <laughs> welcome. Know? Uh, the next episode of Ted Lasso. No, the uh, Kate and I uh, both are on the board. I got to get through Rex first. <laughs> through Rex first. <laughs> Kate and I are on the board of directors of Bridgeway Rehabilitation Services. It's a wonderful organization serving those with severe mental health, behavioral health uh, challenges. And our big dinner is on Thursday, April 21st. And what's exciting about it, just not the fact that it's our annual dinner and it's an important fundraiser for the organization, but we're holding it at our new headquarters, the Claremont House, which is where all our executive offices, administrative offices, as well as um, uh, caregiving and, and, and resource giving to, to our members served will be. So it's on, it's on Thursday, April 21st. Uh, you can find us online, Bridgeway, on Google, bridgeway.org, I think, Kate. I'm not entirely sure what our website is, so. but, yeah. but Google's a wonderful thing. And type in Bridgeway Rehabilitation Services and yep. you'll find it. And, uh, and, and please come out if, if, uh, if you want to support a great organization doing really important work. Yeah. All right. Let me ask you about a web address I'm sure you do know. So say somebody, you know, wants to get a hold of you to learn more about your services, the benefits that you can provide. How can they get a hold of you or the company? Yeah, no, thanks, Vinny. So best way to get a hold of me is on LinkedIn, right? Like um, I'm on LinkedIn. You'll find me. Uh, my email address is simple. It's joconnor at cbiz.com. Vinny already spelled the cbiz for you. So that's the cbiz part of hey. com. Uh, J O C O N O R. Work out for the better. <laughs> Cbiz.com is our is our master website. So, but LinkedIn, if you want to get a hold of me personally, or if you heard my email address that I just ripped off there quickly, uh, that would be the best way to do it. Awesome. Fantastic. All right, I think that's the show. Thank you so much. Thank you to Thank you. our. Thank you. Enjoyed it. It was fun. Thank you to our listeners, especially our subscribers. We appreciate the support. Thank you to New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, the official sponsor of the show. They do home, auto, and workers' comp, so check them out. And finally, thanks to Jim O'Connor of CBiz Benefits and Insurance Services. It was fantastic talking to you today. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Vinny. A lot of fun. Really enjoyed it with you. Thank you. Fabulous. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.